Hello YouTube, long time no see. Uh, sorry I've been away and haven't been making videos for a while. My wife and I had a baby and we moved house. Today we're going to be making something a little bit different. I'm going to try and teach you how to make a layered stencil for spray paint and making artwork. I have made artworks like this before. There's videos on my YouTube channel, I can link them around. You should check some of those out, they're pretty cool. Today I'm going to show you how I do it. So. Let's get to it. All right, so mostly we'll be using an X-Acto knife, maybe a steel ruler, a pencil probably, glasses if you need them. This is what we're gonna be stenciling today. Uh, it's from a comic book. I don't know what comic book. I found it online. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. I just love onomatopoeia. And for those of you who don't know what an onomatopoeia is, Click, chuck, kaboom. I think this is fantastic. I went to the London Graphic Centre. If you've never been there, you should you should go. And I picked up a couple of Montana Gold. I use this for all of my stencil stuff. This stuff is brilliant and reliable and I really like it. I actually went for an off-white colour called Elm. Essentially, the colour I'm going for is the colour of an old comic book page. Equally, I'm going for an off-black. This one's called Coke, a kind of old black ink, because shock black, which is a color that you get with this, shock black was just way too black, and white was just too white. I wanted something that was just a little bit off, that makes it just that little bit more interesting. This is quite a tricky piece to do. There's gonna be multiple layers in this because of what I call, I don't know if anybody else calls them, uh, because of islands. And I'll show you what I mean by islands. An island is basically an area of ink that isn't connected to a, a bigger section of the same color, if that makes any sense. The inside of the B and the A and the O, these are obvious islands, but then you get little more intricate things like C on the fingernail here so we've got a white finger on a black background but then we've got a black line to show where the fingernail is and a white fingernail itself so we've got multiple islands going on around here like at the end of the m where the muzzle flash is for this gun there's a lot of cross hatching here that the artist has done and i've never tried that i think i know how we're going to do that i'm not 100% clear on how that's going to work, but we'll jump that hurdle when we get there. What we're going to do is cut out. I'll go around. I've got multiple pages of this that I've printed out, and I'm going to separate them all out, measure all the way around, five and a half millimeters, all the way around there, and cut it out. Here's one I prepared earlier. And we're going to put it on a piece of scrap ply that I have here, which is exactly that size. So it's going to look like that in the end, but obviously way cooler because we'll have put time and love into it. That's where we are now. So what I'm going to do is cut out all of these and then we'll get to some stenciling. 12 seconds later. I've now cut these all out to exactly the right size. I've got six of them. I think that should be enough. And if it's too many, then we've got spare, which is always good to have. We need to prime this up. So, we've done the white border, that's what that first coat of paint was for. Next, it will mask off that border, that five and a half millimetres, and do a coat of the Coke colour. So we've got a black rectangle on a white border. After that, this is what we need to decide, is what is gonna be the next layer up. So we're gonna have a black background, so we'll probably do the lettering. These, these are good here, there's no islands around here, around any of these letters. We'll cut out all this lettering and maybe a bit of the cross hatching. And then probably, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave the gun for now and the hand. What we'll do is cut out the, his jacket and his face probably, and maybe his ear. Uh, but, but go around his hand and cut out just all this section so we've got a good layer of white paint in one go 
and then, then we'll add more detail on top of that. Right, let's get to it. Okay, what I'm going to do, I think, now that I've got to start to get to the cross hatching bit, cut the M out in, in a straight line and then just nick off these extra bits that are coming across. We'll see how that goes, but for now, let's just um, continue on. Okay, so now that that's all dried off, we're going to put, we're going to mask off for the black border and spray that black. Let's get a coat of Coke on there. A few moments later. Let's see how this turned out. Now you can see why. This is exactly the same size as this here. Making that the same size means that it will always be aligned quite nicely every time you place it on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to spray mount the stencil with 3M spray mount. I think that turned out as well as can be expected. A little bit of a bleed here, but we're gonna go over that bit with for the gun. So let's just leave that to dry and uh, we'll come back to it later. Day two. Time for stencil number two. I'm gonna do the whites on the hands, the fingers and the gun. Let's get to it. So that's now two layers in. Uh, we've got all the base white down. So now what we need to do is start stenciling out the black highlights. So the islands basically. So the middle of the A and the B, a lot of his jacket, the stuff on the gun will get the fingernails in there as well. And maybe we can start adding in a little, a few flecks around the cross hatching. Okay, so that looks like we've got the black stencil done. So, a good way of looking at <clears throat> the work that you've done, because it's difficult to see on the picture, is to turn it over. And you can see, and that looks pretty good. Right, we have two more stencils to do. We have one white one to get in the fingernails here and also there's a little bit to fill in under his glasses here. We also need to do one more black because I forgot to fill in the line that, that separates the top of his jacket sleeve to the, the shoulder rest of the gun. on the cross hatching and at the end uh, I'm not going to cut out every single little square in there to make the cross hatching happen what I'm going to do is a technique that I learned from a guy called panel an artist called panel who 
um, is wonderful. He's a really, really good artist. You should definitely check him out. I'll leave him in the link in the description below. Uh, and what he does, he does shadows on his work. And the way that he does it is he, he lifts up the stencil a little bit off of the, the piece. And then that gives you an area that doesn't have a defined line. And he just gently sprays the can to get, he does shadows this way. And I think I'm gonna use his technique here, which is gonna give us, yeah, I think that looks great. I'd say that's done. There you have it, that's how I make a layered stenciled piece of art like this on a piece of scrap plywood. Um, give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't uh, watched any of my videos before, it's much appreciated and I hope you have a good day. See you later.